Okay, so in this video I want to show you how to export code, compiled code, unlike the, the math classes that weren't compiled but just included and then compiled by the consuming project. We want to export our clock compiled code here from this project so it's consumable here, and it's consumable here, and consumable wherever else we use it. So how do we make it exportable? Let me go to clock, clock H, I think, uh, let's close the test for now, bring clock H over here. Um, this is a Microsoft specific thing, but other platforms have the same concept of exporting code from from their libraries, whatever their version of their DLLs are. So this is Microsoft's special thing, uh, decal spec, okay, declaration, specification, I'm going to say, I think it's uh, DLL export. That's right. So I want to export all of the functions inside of this class so they're visible outside of this DLL. All right now this may look a little interesting to you but but really all this is is a, it's an additional modifier to our clock class. If um, you're familiar with like we could do static or intern, extern or other things to uh, our data types. Well on this one we're saying it's class but we're also putting some additional information here for the C++, the Microsoft C++ compiler to say, hey, export all these functions so they're visible outside the, the clock class. So watch what happens when I do that. I'm going to right click on engine. I'm going to say project only. Let's build only engine. Build started. Build succeeded. And then let me bring, let me bring back up this window we had where before, remember, we had just the engine DLL, but our linker we needs a linker, a lib file to link to, and before we didn't get a lib file, but now we have a lib file. And the whole reason we have a lib file now is because we exported something from our DLL, and the compiler was smart enough to say, hey, if we're going to export that, then those exports need to be stored in the lib file here so that when other projects link to it, they they know what is linkable and where those addresses are and how to patch that up. So there you go. We now have a lib file. On the other end, though, let's go to engine tester. That's where we were consuming our class. I'm going to go back to clock test here, and let's let's see if we can build this project now. I'm going to right click. Actually, before I build it, can you think what's going to happen? <laughs> Okay, we're probably going to get an error because Jamie has some evil laugh. But anyway, project, build only, engine tester. Okay, build started, build failed. Again, we still have these linker errors. What's the problem? We now have a lib file. We're getting linker errors. Well, do you remember when we used this middleware? Qt, glue, whatever we wanted to do. Let's just go into Qt. We had the lib. We, we had to tell the compiler... One, use these lib files, and then two, we had to tell the compiler where these lib files were located. All right? right now, as far as this project's concerned, ex engine tester, yeah, the engine.lib file exists, but we haven't told engine tester where to find that file, and uh, nor have we told engine tester to use that file. So again, let me just illustrate. I know I do this every single time, but here now, an input, instead of using some pre-made lib file from somebody else in some other state or country even possibly. I'm going to say, hey, I want to use engine.lib. Alright, I created the engine lib. Look at me, I'm a big boy. I've, I'm making lib files now. Let's put, click OK, right click, project only, build only engine tester. Can you think what's going to happen? Cannot open file engine lib. You told me to open engine lib and I have no idea where it is. <sighs> well, Let's tell it where it is. We're going to keep the engine project always building out to, to uh, let's see, project files, engine, debug. So in debug version, we want to go to, want to consume this lib file, and when we switch to release, we'll get a release folder, and we want to cons consume the release version of the lib file. So I'm going to come in here and tell engine tester to look in there for it. Properties, linker, general, additional library directories. And let's insert another one. It's going to be our projector. Go up a directory and into the engine project. And then go into config, the config folder. All right, so that could be debug release, or we can do our own configurations. Click OK. Click OK. Project only. Build only engine tester. Still can't find it. I probably typed it in wrong. Let me go double check. Okay, I noticed here I did type it in wrong. It's configuration, not config. I was wondering why that felt a little weird there. Configuration? Is that right? Configuration. I think we're okay. Enter, enter, enter. Uh, build 
project only, or is it project only, build only engine tester, build started, build succeeded. We linked. Good deal. Should have run. <laughs> We've been through this several times, and I know I show it to you every single time, but should it run? Let's go here. I'm going to control alt L, just make sure engine tester, right click this, set this as our startup project, hit F5, and we get an error. The application was unable to start correctly. Oh, that's that's a terrible error. That's a that's not the error I was actually expecting. Uh, I wonder. Let me build clean solution. Clean succeeded. F5. Build started. Uh, wait for it. Pause the video while we wait. Oh, didn't need to pause. Same error. You know, I have a hunch. I have a hunch. I'm gonna click on debug here. Go to engine tester, look at its output directory. Oh, look at all this trash. Remember how to get rid of this trash? Let's clean the solution. Let's go over to engine tester, properties. Uh, let's see, there should be intermediate directory. I'll say it's going to be configuration slash temp. Now let's control shift B. Build started, wait for it to build. Bring this up while we're waiting. Uh, I'm going to get rid of these files as well. Notice we have this temp folder. That's where all the trash is going now. I just told it to. That's not new. We've done that before. Let me go back to uh, here. Build succeeded. Where's our engine tester? Our engine tester output. Where is that? <laughs> Any idea? I showed this. I, I showed you the problem. We had the same problem with the engine project in a previous folder, uh, or in a previous f video. We had the same project with the problem with the engine project. Let me go here. Properties. Remember, it's outputting to the solution dir. I'm going to change that to the project dir. Enter, enter. Let's build again. Build start, build succeeded. Here's engine tester exe. All right. F5. The pro this is the error I was actually expecting. The program can't start because engine DLL is missing from your computer. Try reinstalling it. Well, now wait a minute. We know we have an engine DLL. The problem is the engine DLL is not here with the engine tester exe file. Now that's called, we're privately deploying a DLL when we just copy it directly where the exe can find it. We can also do it machine-wide and also set up some environment variables. I'll probably show you how to do that in future videos. But for now, I just want to get the engine DLL in here. But before I do that, I want to explain why we got the previous error that we did. Remember we had that hokey kind of address error, whatever that was. That's because we were building to sandbox game debug and in one of the previous videos remember we had the engine building to here the engine DLL so this is actually the this engine DLL ILK PDB I forgot to clean when I changed up the engine project to build to its debug directory and so these got left over and and so when the program ran it said oh here's engine DLL and then it tried to use it well it's an older version of the D the DLL that didn't export the functions from the clock and so it's like hey uh, this this code isn't looking like what I was expecting so that's why we had that error anyway I'm just going to delete these clean it by hand all right so back to back to project files here uh, engine tester debug we need engine DLL here but engine DLL builds to engine slash debug. Well, we can copy this by hand. Control C, go by project files, engine tester debug, and paste. But then every time we modify something in the engine project that modifies the interface to the engine DLL, meaning anything that is visible via this decal spec DLL export. We're going to have to do that copy by hand every single time. A lot of, I don't know about you, but I don't want to do that. So um, let, let's let's fix that, but I'll fix that a little later. For now, I just want to see if this is going to work. So let's let's actually just double click on Engine Tester EXE, see what see what we get. Double click. Oh, push. look at that! More DLLs. Remember, we're using Qt Test DLL. Oh, now I got to go copy those middleware Qt. And just to speed things up here, I know that... Oh, we don't have Qt test DLL in our little special version of Qt. Let me bring it in. Okay, I went and found it offline. I'm going to paste it here. going to add it. Tardis SVN add. And let's copy it here. Then go back to project files, engine tester debug. Privately deploy it there. 
All right, double click. Oh, QT Core D4, <laughs> of course. Uh, let me go grab that. Okay, I put it on my clipboard offline. Paste, there we go. Ah, oh, look at this, look at this. Oh, 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 look at this. Look at this tester running. We haven't gotten to the end because we have those long running tests going. But notice clock initialize failed and uh, expected fault. See, these tests are failing. Our test driven development, this is, this is a good sign. This is what we wanted, right? So anyway, we're going to stop the video here. In the next video, we're gonna, I think we're going to patch this up so we don't have to copy engine tester uh, or engine DLL by hand every time and then, and then let's see if we can get these tests working.